for those of you who has been following my journey, you all know that it took me about nine months to learn to code and actually landed my first development job. So in the first episode in 2018, September the 10th, I wanted to say that I want to become a coder. Yes, you can quote me on that. After lots of failures and rejections from other companies and me just keep trying, I finally landed my first development job as a software developer. Over a few years of my career as a engineer. I also been consistently mentoring and also helping other people to get into tech. And in the gist of it, I also been revealing a lot of their resumes, giving them feedbacks on how they can fix their resume to stand out among other candidates. So many mistakes that I've seen people make in the past when they were trying to transition from other professions to tech. So in today's video, I wanted to kind of pinpoint the importance on the resume for people who are transitioning from other professions into tech. So let go. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a full-time software engineer living in New York City. So in today's video, this is what you're going to expect. The first thing we're going to talk about is the format of your resume, how you should format your resume, how you should organize it. The second part is the content of your resume. Let's talk about the formats of your resume. I would say that the format of resumes are pretty subjective, they're really depending on that person who's revealing your resume. But here are some of the takeaways. One page is the industry standard, unless if you are in other countries. I do know that in other countries, not the US, not in Canada, that one page is not the standard in the US one page resume is a pretty standard thing. Usually one page should sum up everything, especially if you are making that career switch, you should only have one page on your resume. Unless if you have more than 10 years of work experience, it's really, really hard for you to squeeze everything on one page, then it's reasonable to have the second page. And just keep in mind that on an average, recruiters probably only have like five seconds five seconds only to skim through your resume and make a decision. So you don't want it to overwhelm them. You want it to make their life easier. So let's move to the next thing. Number two is one column or two columns. That is such a tricky question. Both of them are equally gonna be okay. Um, however, if you are applying, you know, just online, try to stick with one column resume and the reason for that is because sometimes the resume scanners might just not be that smart to recognize two columns or even three columns so you wanted to stick with the traditional resumes when you're submitting it however if you're getting a referral from someone else and you're trying to send over your resume to a third person then I think it might be helpful to send over a two columns resume because sometimes two columns resumes might be more clear to show to either the hiring managers or to the recruiters. What I would say is to try to do your own research and try to do your own A-B testings. When I was applying, I always have two or three different versions of resumes. Let's talk about the font sizes and colors. I would say font sizes from 10 to 12 with colors. And I try to stick with or whatever colors that I feel comfortable with. And for me, when I was applying for jobs, it was purple. But you can totally use black and white as well. You should definitely have different versions of your resume. One thing that I would say that you have to remember is that you need to keep accessibility in mind that sometimes certain colors just doesn't stand out as much to people who are not as accessible in terms of colors. Just keep that in mind, be mindful on that and you're good to go. I think that at the end of the day, layouts of your resume is not going to be the main reasons why people are calling you in for resumes. It's actually your content. 
your content in the resume should be the major focus of drafting or writing your resumes. Let's talk about the name, the contact info, and also the bio section. The section should be clear about your name and your contact information. That should be the first thing that they can see. And usually in this case, it's just the email address. Um, sometimes people do like to leave their phone number. Nowadays, most of the email address will just basically do the trick. I know that a lot of people like to put down the locations. For instance, if they are located in New York City, they wanted to put down that specific location. So I actually would say, don't put down that location unless if you only go into search jobs in New York City. The reason for that is because when recruiters are looking on your resume, if let's say if they're in San Francisco and they're looking at your resume, your resume location says New York City, they will think about the cost of relocating you. Honestly, I would say that make them fall in love with you to the point that they're willing to pay for that relocation fee in the future. Don't limit yourself to just one location if you can, especially for people who are looking for career switching. For my resume, I basically just laying out by saying that I am a software engineer, I am full stack, and I am specializing in front-end development with two years of data analytics background. So in a few sentences, you are basically explaining that, first of all, who you are, um, how many years of experience that you had working in development, and also just like the unique side of you. Very short sentences to describe who you are and your objectives. And try to avoid words like searching for or I'm looking for because obviously you are looking for something. You're handing in your resume. Just be straightforward on your objectives. Sections for technical skills. This is the part where you put or show all of the tech stacks that you had experience in. What I would say is make sure that you have laid out all the technologies and all the buzzwords that will match the positions that you are looking for. Other soft skills like communication or your personality, honestly, it shouldn't even mention as part of your skills. Those are the things that you should be demonstrating in your work experience. Don't try to say I have great communication skills, but try to show that you have great communication skills. Actions are louder than words. So demonstrate that you have those skills. Don't just say that you have those soft skills. Sections for experiences and projects. Okay, so this part is kind of tricky. For those who doesn't have real world work experience that is related to development, I would actually say that put your projects before you even put your work experience on your resume. And I know that for the rule of thumb, right, usually when you're writing resumes, they recommend you to always put your work experience at the top where people can see it. But what I would say for people who are transitioning from other professions to tech, a lot of times your work experience is not at all related to tech, right? Like there's no React, JavaScript, HTML, CSS that is showing on your previous work experience. So in that case, you actually want to put your project on the top and have your work experience afterwards. For work experiences, if you don't have a developer work experience, focus on those transferable skills, um, such as communication skills, collaborations, presentations, and public speakings. This is the good time for you to talk about your soft skills, not at the beginning of your resume, not putting it as part of your skills, but putting it as part of your work experience. Remember this one thing that I mentioned earlier, you wanted to be able to demonstrate your skills instead of talking about your skills. So these are the two major things that I want to focus on on your experiences. So number one is that the sentences should include what was the problem, what tech stack 
you used to solve the problem, and what was the impact after you solved it. Use bullet points to describe your experiences or your projects. So here is an example that I wrote a bullet point demonstrating this experience that I had. Built validation SQL scripts that clean up 1,000 records in production and eliminated the potential engineering interruptions to the new feature. Number two is to use numbers and bolded words to emphasize those buzzwords. We all know those buzzwords that recruiters love, love, love to search for, right? So make their life easier, make them bold, make you know, actual numbers to prove that you has been making impacts in your work. Now, one thing that I want you to do, remember, is you don't want to go too detailed on your resume. Your resume should be a preview of you so they can call you for an interview or they want to see you in person. Think of your resume as a trailer of the movie, but not the entire movie. So don't go too details on the bullet points because you do want it to talk about every single bullet points on the actual interview. Education and miscellaneous stuff that you want to mention on this section. If you already graduated from college for a very long time, I would say more than three years, education is not really relevant. It's good to mention about it, but keep it really, really short. Like where you graduated, what's your major, that's it. You don't have to write a whole paragraph about your education. Unless if there is something that is super impressive about your educational background that you wanted to mention. And for those who attended coding bootcamp or some other extra educations, you should definitely mention that on your resume. But that should not be the highlight on your resume. That should be something that is usually at the bottom of your resume. I do want you to think about things that you participated in, such as hackathons, any awards that you had, or also just, you know, coding related volunteering work. Definitely mention those things on the bottom of your resume. If you are making till the end of this video please leave comments down below and saying that my resume will rock after i fix it please make sure to check out other videos related to job hunting so until next time i will talk to you soon take care